how to prepare a patient for surgery or the pre-operative steps, right? When you're thinking about doing cataract surgery, phacoemulsification or any other cataract surgery, obviously, what are the things you need to keep in mind? Number one, you need to keep in mind that you need to dilate the pupil. If you have not dilated the pupil, if the pupil is constricted, your view of the lens is very small. You can only see a very small central 3 mm of the lens. Obviously, surgery will not be possible through that. Okay. So, how do you dilate the pupil? Pupil is usually dilated with the help of tropicamide plus phenylephrine eye drops. Okay. That's the main thing. Uh, if you want a longer uh, dilatation, which is usually not needed, you can use homide eye drops, that is home atropine or cyclopentolate eye drops. Secondly, what else do you want to do? You want to be able to have a anesthetized eye. Yes. So along with dilatation of the pupil, you want to give anesthesia. Obviously, it has to be local anesthesia. We are not interested in general anesthesia. Now, this local anesthesia can be given or is mostly given topical. Topical. Topical means eye drops. So, proparacane eye drops are given. Anesthesia can also be given intracameral. When you are giving topical anesthesia, sometimes you need to augment it with intracameral. So, you can give an intracameral injection of lignocaine. So, basically, both of them are used together, if I can say so. Then, obviously, what you can do? You can do peribulbar anesthesia. Or what you can do? You can do ret retrobulbar anesthesia if you are not aware of these names please go and watch the video or uh, the starting videos on the basic anatomy of the eye where i have discussed all the roots of ocular drug administration under which i have explained you what is peribulbar and retrobulbar peribulbar means around the eye and retrobulbar means behind the eye as we know retrobulbar is not preferred what is preferred is peribulbar anesthesia which is also called as a peribulbar block what is used under peribulbar block if that is the question how or which drug is used it is a combination of drug for long duration of action we are using bupivacaine for quick onset we are using lignocaine then along with that to make it more quick we are using one ratio 2 lakh dilution of adrenaline mixed and along with that for better breakage through muscular tissue and all the types of tissue we are also adding higher luronidase so this is what makes our peribulbar block or peribulbar anesthesia sometimes also called as midricane okay i hope i'm pretty clear about this there is no confusion about this yes so number one we are dilating the people number two we are giving anesthesia then apart from anesthesia and dilatation of the pupil what do we need to do we need to sterilize okay how are we sterilizing obviously we are giving preoperative antibiotics pre-operative topical antibiotics usually they should be given but because it's a very quick surgery a lot of times if we are doing the surgery on the same day we do not give it also all right and what is the universal profile axis as far as sterilization is concerned what is the universal profile axis guys not only about the eye surgery about everywhere yes obviously the use of five percent povidone iodine or betadine solution instilled into where are you going to install it if we are doing a surgery of the eye yes we instill it in the conjunctival sac okay 
we are going to install it in the conjunctival sac for at least one minute prior to the surgery. Apart from that, the usual painting where we are cleaning the appendages around the uh, area to be, uh, you know, operated on, all that is obvious, very obvious, and all that is also done. But these are the three main things which we are doing preoperatively. Now, once we have prepared the patient, the patient is in the operation theater, now you need to start the surgery. So now you need to know the interoperative steps. So, before I go on writing about the interoperative steps, let us watch a video of focal emulsification so that we get a hang of all the steps better, right? Surgeries, if seen, they seem easier to understand. So, at the beginning of this video, let us first see a very important point, guys. We see that the whole pupil is dilated, yes? Why is it dilated? As I've already explained, that to have a field of view, everybody, as well as the field of surgery. We want to take out the lens, everybody. Lens is behind the pupil. Now, now as the first step, you can see that an MVR blade, everybody, is creating an incision, clear corneal incision, right? And you will see that this surgeon prefers to create two side ports or side incisions. So, he's creating another side port or side incision. That's our step one. It helps us to inject viscoelastic as we see. What is a viscoelastic guys? See there is aqueous in the anterior chamber that is a fluid that will keep leaking out. So we need our anterior chamber to be stable. So to stabilize the anterior chamber we have to fill it with a more dense material and that material is viscoelastic. So it gives us a stable field of surgery. Now after the anterior chamber is filled with viscoelastic this surgeon tends to perform step four before step 2 and step 3, these are all surgeon preferences. You can see a 2.2 mm keratome being used. Yes, now see it everybody. So, the keratome is creating a biplanar incision. First, it is going in the cornea, then it is going down to create an incision. Now, this surgeon prefers to do step 2 and step 3 later on, but those steps are done through the side port. You will be able to see a 26 gauge bent needle creating a flap everybody you can see now you can see a beautiful flap has been created in the anterior capsule the anterior capsule has to be cut everybody yes to be able to touch or remove the nucleus and the cortex so you see that the uh, surgeon is creating a circular window everybody you will see he is completing you can see the margin of the circle here everybody you can see the margin of the circle margin of the circle here everybody now the surgeon is coming closely 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 and the surgeon is completing this step this step is known as ccc continuous curvilinear capsulorexis guys now the capsulorexis has been complete you will be able to see a complete round circle everybody see everybody you will be able to see a complete round circle going here going here going here coming here coming here everybody you are able to see a complete round circle now this surgeon preference to do it without staining the anterior capsule as we'll discuss in the theory that some surgeons can stain this anterior capsule with a tripen blue dye through that we are able to see a blue surface and it becomes slightly easier to be able to perform this step this surgeon is an experienced surgeon. He is able to perform this step against the red glow of the fundus. This orangish or reddish glow that you see everybody, this is the fundal red reflex which is showing through. Now, you see we have taken a cannula and we have gone below the anterior capsule, injected fluid such that there is hydro dissection. Hydro dissection is what everybody, hydro dissection is separation of the cortex from the capsule and that is why you will be able to see that now we are able to rotate or move the nucleus within the capsular bag or the capsule everybody because now it is free from attachments of the capsule and now I have free rotation of the nucleus. Now you will see everybody that the surgeon inserts a probe, a pen like structure, see at the bottom of your screen, inside. This is called the phaco probe, everybody. Yes, through this phaco probe, he will try to remove this nucleus. This phaco probe has three functions. The first, it can irrigate. See, when we are sucking in something out, we have to keep on replacing fluid, everybody. Irrigation, it can aspirate, it can suck, and it has energy. Phaco emulsification, ultrasound energy. You will see the ultrasound energy in action in a while, everybody. Let us see. See now. Now you see that the surgeon is using ultrasonic energy and is creating a groove everybody. Can you see it is looking as if there is a cake and I am eating that cake. 
ओके वॉट इज दिस एनर्जी अल्ट्रासोनिक बट दिस अल्ट्रासोनिक एनर्जी बेसिकली डज वॉट एट द टिप ऑफ द प्रोब इट कन्वर्ट्स इट इन टू टू एंड फ्रो मोशन सो बेसिकली वी आर चिजलिंग एवरीबडी थ्रू चिजलिंग वी ईट अप द मटीरियल नाउ यू विल सी न्यूक्लियर फ्रेगमेंटेशन एवरीबडी लेट सी the surgeon will soon be able to divide the nucleus into small pieces everybody let's see yes see now you will be able to see a break you see a small break now you will be able to see a complete break the surgeon again attempts to break the nucleus into small pieces and at this point of time yes see now you see a complete break everybody you see here a complete break has taken place now more such breaks are created another break has been created another break has been created so more such breaks are created to form smaller nuclear fragments so that it becomes easier to suck them we can't suck the whole nucleus together everybody so now you see that the broken pieces again breaking pieces and now the surgeon is sucking them in in the phaco probe through the aspiration or the vacuum action i can say small piece sucked in again you will see small piece sucked in everybody yes keep on seeing this everybody so this is basically called phaco emulsification the word phaco emulsification comes from here that using the ultrasonic power converting it into to and fro motion we are doing emulsification we are uh, emulsifying the small fragments of the lens and we are sucking all the lens particle through our phaco probe now you can see that almost all the nucleus has been removed what remains here everybody you can see some cortical fibers in the periphery you can see everybody some cortical fibers which have been loosened by hydro dissection but they have not been completely removed now we take another instrument which looks like the phaco probe everybody you will be able to see this instrument here it looks like the phaco probe but it is actually called the i and a irrigation and aspiration that means it is doing just two functions instead of three functions it is irrigating fluid obviously needs to be continuously replaced and it is aspirating it is sucking in these cortical fibers cortical fibers if you remember are soft always nucleus is hard nucleus is large and hard so we need to break it and emulsify it cortex is small so we can just suck it everybody soft and small pieces we can just aspirate or suck them now you will see that gradually all 360 degree the surgeon will move the i and a everybody irrigation and aspiration and will be able to suck all the cortical material now you can see going here everybody sucking in coming here sucking all the cortical fibers you can see them peeling out easily because they have been hydro dissected had they been stuck everybody the posterior capsule would also have come in now that the cortical fibers have been cleaned up everybody you can better see against the red glow the margins of the anterior capsule see everybody you can see a beautiful anterior capsule capsular axis everybody c c c continuous curvy linear capsular axis okay now you see that the surgeon is injecting the lens iol through a small 2.2 mm incision but the diameter of the lens is 6 mm why is it possible because this lens is foldable you could see it was folded and now it is slowly unfolding everybody yes it is slowly unfolding everybody and now you will be able to see that the surgeon is pressing it down below the anterior capsule and rotating it everybody to see whether it has been completely able to get everybody inside the capsular bag and once we are able to implant the iol in the capsular bag we say our surgery has gone to be successful the only step which remains is the small incisions we had created we want to close them but we do not suture them guys we just close them by hydro closure so we hydrate those so there is slight edema edema leads to closure because our incisions are small 1 mm and 2.2 mm only